Amen. Amen. And amen. I asked the first service uh, to give me permission for this, and I'm going to ask you guys as well. Not in a lazy sense, but can y'all let me lay back and get in my groove this morning? <laughs> my mom's ready. <laughs> y'all ready to get? It's going to be a nice. Uh, I, I was saying this, mo uh, this morning, it's kind of like golfing. You know, you, I don't know if y'all like to golf, but when you swing, you hit it right in that sweet spot, get in the groove, baby, ain't no other better feeling than that, and that ball's... So let me just relax, sit back, I want you to hold on, uh, I don't want you guys to, to, to get too uh, scared and uptight today, it's going to be good because God's got me here on a mission, okay, God's got me here for a purpose and an assignment and uh, I'm not, I'm, through His Holy Spirit, I'm, I'm not going to let you down, I'm going to let God move through me, okay, so can I ask your humble permission to offend you today? Um, before I, before I speak, I want to pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this opportunity. Holy Spirit, use, use this time wisely, God. Let me steward it to, to your way, Father. We thank you and praise you. In Christ's name we pray, amen and amen. I'll try to get you guys out of here in two hours. Okay? Y'all ready? Okay. Because, look, look if y'all start saying amen, okay, I'm going to start shouting, doing cartwheels, and I won't stop. Okay? Can I, so can I hear amen? Okay? I don't want to, whenever I preach, I don't want to preach in front of a stuffy crowd, okay? Because so, if it's a stuffy crowd, I'm, I'm you know, all right, I'm going to hold you even longer. So, I'm just kidding. Uh, so, y'all just let loose. Y'all relax. Y'all got cushion on them seats. It's okay. All right? So, it, it's going to be all right. But I asked for permission to offend some people today, okay? And this is why. Offense is your friend. A lot of us don't know that, and we don't accept it, and it's a hard pill for us to swallow, but being offended can be your friend. How is that, Pastor Lee? Well, let's say you are at point B in your walk with Christ. Let's say you're right here on this timeline. And God wants you to go to C. How do I, as a steward of God's time, get you to C? I got to make you hate B. Y'all get it? For you to move forward to C... You have got to hate where you're at. Hate's a strong word, Pastor Lee. Well, I'm going to make you hate it. Okay, the Lord's going to make you hate it today because we have got to move forward, church. Can I tell you something? America has no patent on God, even though we think we do. I'm going to get into that a little bit deeper later. But we don't have a patent on God like we think we do. There are churches over in Asia and in Africa that are eons ahead of us as far as God. And that's, not, that's a hard pill to swallow in America. But I'm, I'm going to get to that. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and offend you. It's going to be okay. I'm going to preach it down. We're going to come back up, okay? We're talking about the kingdom of God this morning. Can I tell you a little secret? Jesus never once in the Bible preached the gospel of Jesus. Okay, that doesn't make sense. Jesus was not about himself. Jesus was about his father. Jesus was about his father's kingdom. You read in the Bible, and it amazed me. I never noticed before until I started studying this. How many times Jesus said the word kingdom? My father's kingdom. The kingdom is light. The kingdom is light. My father's kingdom. La -da 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 -da. Over and over and over again. Jesus was selfless and all about his father's kingdom. So let me lay that groundwork. I don't have the scripture up here, and I'm kicking myself for not putting it up there. Uh, but it's in your bulletin, and it's your memory verse, I guess, that you're going to memorize. It's Matthew 24 and 14. <clears throat> I'm going to say something in the very beginning. I'm probably not going to get an amen from it. But it's going to make you listen the rest of the time, because you're like, where in the world is he going with this? Those of you, now I believe we need to live every single day like it's the last day on earth and the Lord's coming back tomorrow, amen? But those of you... Who are at home, got your bags packed, ready for glory for Jesus to come the next second. You need to go home and unpack your bags. <laughs> and you're like, oh Lord, I've shut him out. He's blaspheming. <laughs> no, I've read God's word. And Matthew 24 and 14 said that Jesus will not come back until the gospel of what? The kingdom of God is preached. Then the end will come. So you say, Pastor Lee, how in the world, how can you have, how can you stand up there and say that the Lord's not going to come back? 
Well, I read in that scripture that the gospel of the kingdom has got to be preached. And quite frankly, I don't think that gospel is being preached in America right now. The gospel of the kingdom. What is a kingdom then? Well, we need to know. We need to know what is Jesus talking about? My father's kingdom must be preached before I come back and gather my people. What is he talking about? Y'all ready to get head deep into this? Say amen. I need some amens this morning because I don't want to get stuffy. I'm going to preach towards the love like I've heard before. So if I hear some amens, I'm going to migrate to you. Okay? A kingdom is comprised of four components. From the top down, it goes king, citizens, law, land. Okay? Those are the four things that comprise a kingdom. So I'm going to go kind of out of order of that. First, I want to talk about law. I'm going to spend most time on king. Okay? But let me talk about law. Everybody know what the Ten Commandments are? Cool. Cool. All right. Uh, Jesus come not to disgrace the commandments. Jesus came not just to put the commandments out of the way. Jesus came to fulfill the law. Do you understand that? None of us could fulfill this law. The Bible says they were up in heaven looking. Who is worthy? Who is worthy? But there was a lamb slain. He was worthy. That's Jesus. Okay? So can I lay that foundation down right now? Jesus sacrificed himself for yours and my sin. Therefore fulfilling the law because he lived a perfect blameless life. Are we cool with that? Alright, that's foundation. Foundation number one. Can I preach to holiness people right now? We got some holiness people in here. We got some people in here filled with the Spirit of God. Let me hear you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Yeah. Y'all ain't going to shout here in a second. Throw the scripture up, baby. 2 Corinthians 7 1. See, we've got two types of sin. One in which holiness people are very good at spotting. I mean, it's just like, ah, there it is. Therefore, 2 Corinthians 7 and 1. Having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the. and. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Can I read that again to make sure I did not skip over anything? Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. And that's it. Right? The flesh and the what? Spirit. Pastor Lee, there's two types of sin. You better bet there are. And let me tell you, us holiness people are very good at pointing out fleshly, physical sin. Baby, you better not come into church with alcohol on your breath. You better not come in here smelling a cigarette smoke. You better not come in here. I, I'm, I, where's my amen? Somewhere. You better not come into this place doing that. How dare you come into the house of God like that? Can I tell you the God's honest truth? A can of alcohol has never split a church up. A cigarette has never split a church up, but divisiveness, Pharisees, bitterness, anger, jealousy, that's what splits a church up. Can I tell you the truth? Do y'all agree with that? See, we're pointing fingers. Lord, you better not come in here smelling like that alcohol. Lord, have mercy, we're going to have a prayer line for you. But we got people that are so divisive and bitter, and they're going to tell 40 of their friends and split a church and go start somewhere else down the road. See, we notice the physical sin. But can I tell you something? As far as the church, physical sin is not lethal. Spiritual sin is lethal. Spiritual sin will tear a church in half as quick as you can even think. But we don't notice that. Lord, somebody better not be lying. Oh, my Lord. Oh, Jesus. Uh, do you know what she did the other day? Oh, my Lord. Let me just call you and tell you. You're the one that's doing it. You're the one that's breaking the church apart by calling y'all buddies and getting a committee about 20 people and going to start a church down the road. Can I tell you something? Let me just be, in other words, let me tell you this. If you're sitting in this place and you do not receive from Pastor Jonathan or anybody that gets up here and preach, get up and leave. If you are not receiving, get up and leave because the enemy would love it if you just sat in here. Here, so let me get some amens over here. The enemy would rather you sit your honey in that seat right there 
and not receive a single thing from God. This is the truth, guys. And see, we, we look over that. We look over that. See, there was an idiot, and if that's a bad word to y'all's kids, I'm sorry, that even thought. See, Jesus was praying for people and casting out. I'm getting lathered up now. This is good. He was casting out demons. He was casting out spirits. And somebody had the nerve to say he can only cast out those spirits because he's the chief of all demons. Jesus is like, baby, are you serious? I can only cast out demons because I'm the chief. You know what Jesus said? I love that man. I love that man. He said, if I was the chief, and this is the Lee International Version. If I was the chief of demons, why would I cast demons out? Because a kingdom divided against itself will not stand. Y'all going to get me hooping and hollering. Listen, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. In other words, let me tell you this. What is the vision? See, I, I've been on a kick about dissecting God's word here recently. We read over little words and we don't even think about what they really mean. Division. What does it mean to divide? The prefix die means two or two or more. Okay? And then the last word is vision. So when you say the word division, what is it? Two visions. Where there are two visions in a house of God, it cannot stand. What are you saying, Pastor Lee? When, when, when this man of God, Pastor Jonathan, comes back and we don't stand behind his vision and we got our own opinion? Hello? Now let me tell you something. Your opinion may not be bad. Your vision may not be evil. But if it does not coincide with what the man of God says, a kingdom divided will never stand. Shh. I've heard it said church is the only place that will shoot their wounded. I don't know if that's the truth or not, but I've, I've seen evidence. You got somebody struggling, you got somebody going at it, and they got that physical sin going on, and they struggling, and you committing even more of a spiritual sin by blaming them, pointing at them, judging them. Who are you? Jesus said, he who's that sin cast the first stone, right? Your brother, your sister, whoever in Christ is struggling. Why don't we lend a hand instead of slapping them on the face? Oh, y'all going to get me hoping and hollering here in a second. Ooh-wee. Hallelujah. See, why can't we? Why, what? And you know what? What I'm about to get into is something that is not preached in America. And, and, and there's a reason why, and I'm going to tell you. But next I want to get, see, we, we lay down law. We lay down the law of God and, and, and what he expects of us and the fleshly and spiritual sin. Next we have territories. I'm not going to spend much time here. But I want to tell you, Wood has given you an illusion of what demonic force and activity really does. Okay? We see all these exorcism movies and all these things about them. The enemy works in that way. I'm not, I'm not putting anything like that down. But that is not his main focus. That is not his main priority is to possess people and make them spit green stuff out at you. I'm sorry to tell you that, but Hollywood is lying to you. Demonic forces take territory. Why do you think when you go to the beach, everyone takes their clothes off? I, don't, I know how this thing goes, guys. It, women and men wearing half, half of anything. There is a territory of sexual desire there. Why do you think you go up to Seattle, Washington, it rains, it's dreary, and hardly sunshine at all? There's a spirit of depression there. There's more suicide happening in Seattle than probably any other city in America. The enemy has set up a territory. Why are we sitting in a comfy old church and not reaching out and grabbing that territory back? Just sucked all the air right out of this room. See, we get so comfortable and these, these pews are so comfy and I'm just going to sit down here in this air conditioner. Can I tell you something? Brother Carlos can tell you that our best use services down there is when our air conditioner tears up. You know why? Because we're not, we're, not, we're not blessed with that convenience. We're in there because we want to be in there. Come on, somebody. What if these pews didn't have no cushion on them and they were those old wooden ones? Would you still be in here? You know, I kind of like those wooden ones. I didn't think about that. That made people not want to sit down long enough and they'd get up. Oh, hallelujah. 
<laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Taking ground. Taking ground. See, the enemy has set up, see, across that high school over there. Mm-mm-mm. We are a mere hundred yards from that high school, church. And there is such a territory of alcoholism, teen pregnancy over there, it ain't even funny. It's not even funny. Mere steps in that direction. Mere steps. Church, we got to reach and pull that school back. See what the enemy meant for wrong, we need to pull it right back. We need to pull it right back. Y'all say, well, why, why do you use all these boards and all these lights and stuff? You know what the enemy used for good? God's grabbing it by the nap of, nap of the neck and say, you coming back to me. You coming back. People say, oh, ain't going to be no guitars. Ain't going to be no drums in that church. God is saying what the enemy meant for wrong. I'm saying you're going to praise him with the loud cymbals. You're going to praise him with the timbrels. You're going to praise him with the small cymbals. You're going to praise him with the guitar. You're going to praise him with the keyboard. sound is changing guys the sound is changing but God stays the same Amen. yesterday today forever let me move on we're about to get we're about to get shouting y'all about to get off your seats you are citizens of the kingdom of God mm -mm 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 -mm. we don't live like it though can I tell you something about Solomon the queen of Sheba came and visited Solomon in his, in, in, in his kingdom. She didn't even have to go into his courtroom. The Bible said when she saw the standard of living of his servants, there was no spirit left inside of her. What are you saying, Pastor Lee? When she saw <laughs> how that kingdom citizens lived. Y'all catch that? When she saw how they lived, there was no spirit left in her. In other words, let me tell you this. You are children of God. Why don't you start living like it? Why don't we start acting like it? Why don't we start acting like we are the head and not the tail? Come on, somebody. Why don't we start living like we're the head and not the tail? Lord, I'm going to have a shack in glory one day. Oh, my Lord Jesus. I'm play the violin. Where are them people that's going to stand up and be unashamed of God? Can I tell you, in Africa or in those other countries, they ain't ashamed of God. They'll even look straight onto a barrel of a gun to say, I love the Lord God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we think we got a patent on God in America. Can I tell you something that scared me down to my core? Something that scared me down to my core, and I don't know if it was me thinking or if it's God told me. But you see how God is not, the, 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 the government and, and the regulations do not really like God over in those countries. Is that what it's going to take in America for God's people to really stand up? For God to be taken out? Because I tell you, the moment that God is taken out of the country, the real people of God are going to stand up. Regardless. Regardless. Whether if your life dependent. See, it's so easy right now. We can come to church and carry our Bible out in the street and not worry about getting shot in the head because of it. But will there come a day in America where that will happen? True people of God's going to stand up. Lord, I'm thinking, God, please, you know, I thank you for this freedom that we got, freedom to praise you. But I look over there in those other countries and they're praising no matter what. They're praising on dirt floors. Mm -mm -mm. Let, me, let me move on because I can stay there for two more hours. Let me tell you something about inheritance. See, the church is very good at this. Y'all still here? We still good? I mean, give me a hand clap. Y'all still here? Y'all working? We're getting good. I'm about halfway done. Oh, Charlie's will still be there. <clears throat> McDonald's is still going to be there. Inheritance. Let me tell you first about seed time and harvest. Uh, the church has preached so much seed time and harvest. It, it's just like, okay, we got it. Do you guys understand this? Let me preach a whole sermon on seed time and harvest right here. I put a seed in the ground. I cover it up, water it, wait. And then I'm going to harvest. Do you all understand that? I believe that's very clear. I believe that is a very clear message. I think that's clear cut. That if I plant, I work, I'm going to sow, and then I'm going to reap. Okay? Very clear cut message, and I don't need to stay on that. But as citizens, you have an inheritance. 
And can I tell you something? God, I'm about to shout. Inheritance is not about what you do. It's about who you are. Oh, my gosh. Inheritance is not about what I do. Inheritance is about what's in my bloodline. See, my last name and, and, and who I am is in my blood. I can't change that. No surgery can make me change that. It's who I am. So let me put it in this word. Let's say your granddaddy has a billion dollar deal going on. A billion dollar deal going on and he's got so much money and he's got an inheritance for you. Woo. All right, baby. And when you turn 18 years old, you're going to get a billion dollars. Bam. Man. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Right? I'm going to worship. I'm going to shout. I'm going to pay my bills off. Right? Let me tell you something. This works the same way in the spiritual. Go to our next scripture. Galatians 4 and 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave. Though he is master of all. Can I put that in the Lee International Version? You could be an inheritance, have an inheritance to a Fortune 500 company the moment you turn 18. But if you're 17, you could be living under a bridge begging for scraps. Though you may inherit all. What are you saying, Pastor Lee? As long as you are spiritually immature, my God. I take my glasses off because they're probably going to fly. As long as you are spiritually immature, you're not going to receive that inheritance. But until you mature yourself. <laughs> what are you talking about, Pastor Lee? I'm talking about the people that get aggravated every time the pastor don't preach what they want to hear. I'm talking about the, pre the, the people that get so bitter because of what sister and brother so and so. Who cares? Okay? This is about God. This is about his kingdom. I'm not going to let my inheritance get spoiled just because sister so-and-so don't like what I wear. I'm not going to... Blake, I ain't going to let you steal my blessing. Can I tell you something? I'm going to meddle right now. I'm going I'm to meddle. You got people up here in the altars praying and fighting for their lives and we got people in the back doing this. Can I tell you something? Can I be mean? If you're going to sit down and not reach your hand out and pray for them people, go get you a drink of water because I ain't going to let you steal my blessing up here. Come on. Uh, if y'all don't like me, y'all send letters to pastor. He told me to preach. And I'm going to preach like it's my last time. We can't expect to come into this place and people... See, when people hit this altar, they are fighting for their life. For eternity. And we got people on their cell phone wondering, what am I going to eat? So in a sense, what are you saying, Pastor Lee? I'm saying when you choose not to worship or you choose not to lift out your hands and pray, you may be stealing somebody from their blessing. Mm -hmm. That's it. I don't like it when he preaches. I'm preaching you down. We're about as low as we're going to get. We're going to be back up here in a second. I say to you that the heir, as long as he's a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all. How many of you can say right now, you know that God, you ain't got to raise your hand, you know you got a blessing, but you're living like you're living on scraps right now. You're living like this is my last meal, and Lord, just please bless it because I'm about to give up. God says, you are a citizen of my kingdom. And my servants have the best. You will prosper. But you've got to spiritually mature. How do I spiritually mature, Pastor Lee? The king. Let me talk about the king. Y'all thankful y'all got a king for a daddy? Y'all don't act like it. Y'all thankful y'all got a king for a daddy? This gospel ain't preached in America. That's why some of y'all's faces are like, what in the world is he talking about? America does not have a patent on God. I said that earlier. We do not have a claim on God. We don't have a claim on, on, on how this thing should be. You take a week trip and you can ask our missionaries. Take a few day trip over to another country. You'll see how the kingdom operates. How does it operate? Well, this is just going... In a kingdom... Well, let me, let me say this. In America, and this is going to sting, 
in America, God is a convenience. Let that, let that marinate for a little bit. In America, we see God as a convenience, but over in other worlds, they see God as a necessity. There's our problem. God is a convenience. God is microwavable. I can put God in whenever I want Him to when I'm feeling bad and I did something wrong. Come on, somebody. Am I going to get some amens? Where am I going to preach at? God is a convenience in America. When I feel... Oh, Lord. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. We come into church... And, 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 and the worship gets started. Pastor Brian gets up here with this good-looking self, and he's about to get this thing going, and we got the countdown going, and you can feel God's presence moving. And Lord, I'm going to shout these things off. And you feel the worship building, and the music starts playing, and it's just like, oh, Lord, I can feel Him in this place. I can feel God. I can feel God. Woo! Oh, He's about to do it. He's about to do it in this place. And then the worship starts, and everybody's like... Yeah, then you go back down and you get on your cell phone. You go back down and you're thinking, where am I going to eat? Oh, Lord Jesus, in this place. I'm going to shout my problems off, but you're going to miss out on the most important part of the service. The Word of God. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Mm -mm -mm. Immaturity. Spiritual immaturity. Because God is such a convenience for us. We think we can just put Him in whenever we want. And get Him out whenever we want. What happens when He's taken away from you by the government? God becomes a necessity. That's when people start to reach when they can't even feel Him. That's when people start to press on and come to church even though they've got their air conditioner and their light shut off. That's people who can praise and they don't even need an a electric instrument to praise with. That's necessity. I don't know about you guys, but when money gets tight, you do what you've got to do. But when money is just, whew, I'm going to spend, I'm going to get this, I'm going to get that, and then you find yourself back into the same mess you were in before. And then it becomes, oh, shh. That's what we do. Just whoop, 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 whoop. I'm going to get up here and praise. I'm going to praise everything off. I'm going to go back down. Whew, that was so awesome, Lord. <laughs> That's just Jonathan up there preaching. Oh, it's just Lee up there preaching. <laughs> Galatians 4 and verse 2. Let me add another part of that. We always, this is, you got to get this part to get the next part. You differ nothing from a slave, though you're master of all. But is under guardians and stewards until the appointed time by the Father. Under guardians and stewards, where is my inheritance? Can I tell you something? You say, God, I want to serve. In some capacity, Lord, use me. I, I want to serve. I want to be... Let me tell you something. You can't go out into the desert and the woods and expect to serve God. Because that squirrel ain't going to do nothing for you. That little snake on the ground, you sitting there worshiping and praising God, that ain't going to affect him at all. He's probably going to bite you. All right? You want to serve God, God's going to put you under somebody. Mm -mm, that's not preaching in America. We, we, I'm an American. I got my own rights. I'm an individual. I got my... No. Let me tell you something. The way God works, you want to serve, you're going to be under somebody. Because when you've done it to the least of these, you've done it to me. So when you see that man walking down the road and the Lord puts it in your heart to give him the money, don't even think about what he's going to spend that for because you just gave to the Lord. Can I tell you something? The Lord, I'm a firm believer that when it says, when you've done these to the least of these, you've done it to me, that's when I serve somebody and I give somebody the right hand of fellowship and I love them when they're unlovable and I just do I am... Serving God. I am serving God. Why? Because I've never seen God come down right in the middle right here with his eyes on fire with a blazing flame and, and a white suit on. I've never seen that. Okay? I've never seen that before. 
But I see God in you, and you, and you, and everybody else. So when I serve you, therefore I serve the Father. <clears throat> Under guardians and stewards. But see, we've got to understand this. Y'all have all read John 3.16, but there's a verse, Joshua 3.16. Okay? Joshua was leading the children of Israel. And then he said this, which was probably so strong. He said this, which probably made people look the same way you're probably looking at me right now. Throw the scripture up there. Joshua 3 and 16. Then it shall come to pass, when you are multiplied and increased. Y'all ready for a multiplication and increase in God? Say amen. amen. In the land in those days, says the Lord. This is Joshua peering in to the kingdom age of us right now. That they will say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Now folks we're talking about one of the most coveted things. That, that we've ever known. Everybody wanted this piece, of, this piece of furniture right here. That the Philistines would fight to get it. People would die to get this thing. And Joshua is saying they will say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord. It shall not come to mind. Nor shall they remember it. Nor shall they visit it. Nor shall it be made anymore. Bible, the Bible's saying right here, and Joshua said, see, this is a time, this is where God's mercy seat was. The Holy Spirit rested upon the ark. Okay? Now, he's saying that the ark of the covenant will be no more. It shall not come to mind, nor shall they remember it, nor shall they visit it, nor shall it be made anymore. So it's going to be done with. People aren't even going to think about it anymore. That's just the old box. We don't need that thing anymore. So what, what, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We don't have the box anymore. <laughs> Under guardians and stewards, you will find your inheritance. Can I tell you what God's saying right here? I'm talking about the place where the raw glory of God sat. You know what the Bible said in that verse before? It's going to be in your leaders. Did y'all catch that? It is going to be in your pastors. It is going to be in your leaders. It's going to be in your Sunday school teachers. It's going to be in your life group leaders. It's going to be in your, it's going to be in your youth leaders. It's going to be in those people. I'm talking about the raw, uninhibited glory of God is now in the man. A lot of people don't understand that. Guys, I say all this to get to this. In 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 16, the Bible said, When one died, all died. But it says, We regard no man after the flesh. If any man's a new creation, old things are passed away, all has become new. Okay? Let me, let me just lay it out flat right here. When the man of God hits this stage, when Pastor Jonathan or Pastor April, whoever it is coming up here, hits that stage, Dependent on how you regard them and honor them is what you're going to receive. If that is just Jonathan up there preaching to you, you better love him because that's all you're getting is Jonathan. That's it. You're not going to pull any greatness out of him. Why do you think people can go and go to a Benny Hinn conference and just you know get laid out in wheelchairs and, and crutches all over the stage? Why? He's the man of God. He's the. Can I tell you, Benny Hinn's got the same Holy Ghost pastor's got on him. But when people come, can you see the people, honey, we're going to a Benny Hinn conference. We're going to receive from God. He's the man of God. I'm going to get out of this wheelchair. And he goes up there and gets healed. Awesome. You know you can come in the Life Worship Center in a wheelchair and get up walking. Amen. How do you do it? How do you do it? When you start seeing that man as the man of God and the raw glory of God's presence on him. I'm not regarding anybody after the flesh though. Right, that's the problem. We see him as Jonathan. I've always heard him. I probably even wiped his honey when he was little. <laughs> that's just Jonathan. The Bible says that Jesus could do no great thing in his hometown. Why? Because he was Joseph's boy. He, he, he was the carpenter's son. That's just Jesus. He could do probably a couple of miracles outside the gates, but he could do no great thing in there. Why? Because Jesus became common. 
He was the son of God, the word of God wrapped in the flesh, and he could do no great thing. Go in there and read it. It's in your Bible. But when he got out, when people started regarding and honoring him as a living, walking, breathing word of God, eyes began to be healed. Lame could walk again. Those who were in sin were in sin no more. Why? Because the man of God came in the scene. Oh, Lord, I hope y'all getting this. I hope y'all getting this. What are you saying, Pastor Lee? Well, you know what? I heard about a church in Africa that they had fifty th uh, a church that sat 50,000 people and they had 500,000 members. 50,000 seat church, 500,000 members. 50,000 people crammed in an aluminum metal building. 450,000 outside of the building. And when the man of God hit the stage, everybody stood up. Regarding him correctly. You say, I'm not going to honor Jonathan. You know, it's, he's just a man. No, can I tell you something? Jonathan and his anointing are completely two different people. A lot of people don't know that. See, that, that's why some people, you're like, how in the world can they get up and still preach the gospel when I know what they did? Because who they are and the anointing God has on them are two completely different things. They're different. And it is hard for church leaders and pastors to deal with that controversy sometimes. Because we go home and we got the same struggles as you guys do. I'm going to give you a newsflash. I'm not perfect. I'm sorry. I'm going to fail you. I will disappoint you. And see, Lee cannot get up here and do this. This is not Lee. This is the anointing that God's put on me. And I'm going to honor and reverence it. Okay? When Pastor Jonathan hits that, and I'm talking him up a lot. Why? Because he's given us this vision. He's our man of God. He's our shepherd. We treat him as such. If he gets a stage, Lord puts it in your heart to stand up. Stand up and honor him. Amen. He's the man of God. He is the raw glory of the Ark of the Covenant. You're lifting him up. No, I'm lifting his anointing up. My God, I hope you get this life worship center. When Pastor Brian gets up there, he's one of the good looking men in this church, right? Do you see him as Brian? Or do you see him as the one? Can I tell you something? Oh, Lord. <laughs> the Lord put this in my spirit the other day. That his spirit cannot be manufactured. It can be ushered, though. So when Pastor Brian gets up there, he's got two things he can do. He can either try to manufacture it himself or just usher it in. How many of you can say we got a good worship pastor that will take the presence of God and say, come on in, God. Come on into this place. See, so many people try to manufacture and make God. I'm going to make this thing work. No, if you're trying to manufacture it, honey, you need to go back to school. <laughs> you usher the presence of God in. You bring the presence of God in this place. You, you, you lay it wide open. But how many of us just clock out right after it's over? How many of you right now have looked at your cell phone wondering what time it was? There you go. There you go. I bet people over in other countries don't even care what time it is. They'll spend four hours in a hot church in 90 degree weather just to get a chance. Why? Because that man on the stage has what I need. It is a necessity. God is not a convenience. He's not a convenience. Worship team, can you come help me? Can I tell you something? What would you do right now if Jesus Christ or God himself walked through these doors and you saw a physical appearance of him? Woo. Brother Matt, what would you do? Throw mashed potatoes at him. Some of y'all get that. He preached about that before. I just want to have a food fight with Jesus. There wouldn't be a, probably a person sitting down in here. But how about when the pastor walks up there and stands up there? Can I tell you God walked in this place? Why don't we stand up and regard it? When we say, that's the man of God, that is the raw glory, and he's got what I need. You think pastors are just, just get up there and, and get sermons together just because, you know, we just want to do it and feel good? No, God puts it in our hearts and preaches to us so that we can give to you. Let me tell you something. I didn't tell the first service this. There's two different types of anointing. There's a kingly anointing and a priestly anointing. There's a kingly anointing and a priestly anointing. In the church, your leaders, your pastors, whatever, they have a priestly anointing on them. They are like John the Baptist. Okay? I'm like John the Baptist. I'm proclaiming the way of the Lord. 
Okay, I've got a priestly anointing upon me. But then Jesus came. And he had the kingly anointing. What is the kingly anointing? That's you. That's right. And you know what that means? A priestly anointing cannot bring a revival. A kingly anointing brings revival. That's why pastors can get up here and preach if they're blue in the face and pass out from preaching. They can't bring revival. You do. You say, I want this church to move. I want to go from A to B. I hope I've made you hate, hate B to your guts to move forward. I want to move, Pastor Lee. I want to, I want to go forward. I, I, I want to see the... Oh, God. You got to hate where you're at. Can I tell you something even more? Brother Matt, come up here, brother. Let's say we call you up here. You get this bucket. You ready to take up the offering? And people in this church regard the anointing of God. And you brush up against them when you take up the offering. I believe cancer can fall off. Just by the usher brushing up against you. I believe diabetes can be healed when the parking lot attendant shakes your hand. Why? Because I regard you. I regard his presence in this place. And when I touch a man of God, hallelujah. You can be seated, Matt. That don't make sense here in America. Why? Because it's the kingdom of God. Pastor Lee, what is the kingdom like? Get your Bible out and read what Jesus said. Countless times, kingdom is like, kingdom is like, kingdom is like, kingdom is like. Brother Matt said you got to be like a child. You got to be humble as a child to go into the kingdom. What does that mean? Read it, look at it, study it, dissect the word of God. See what he's trying to really say to you. This thing, see, we try to run church like a secular government. Church does not run like government. Church runs into the kingdom. Jesus came in the time of the Romans. He could have come in the, the, the Babylonians or, or the Egyptians or whatever. But Jesus came at the appointed time and it was under Roman rule. The way the Romans ran their kingdom is that they would not drive the people out of their land. They would send a governor to that land to govern over the people. That's the way the kingdom ran. So why did Jesus come during that time? Why did Jesus come during that time? Can I tell you God has sent us a governor? God has sent us somebody that is going to lay down the law through God. You're, like, you're lifting the man up. No, I'm lifting up the anointing. I'm telling you again. The man has anointing on him. Pastor Jonathan has an anointing on him. And until we start regarding him that way and regarding the leaders in the church that way, we're not moving. But... Where's the, when is the day going to come at Life Worship Center when somebody hits the stage and the whole church stands up and starts shouting and he ain't even got to say a word? That doesn't happen. Well, it happens in Africa. happens over there. You know what I heard a guy say? He said, maybe they need to come over here and teach us about the gospel. You know what I believe? I believe, see, I'm nobody. I'm a nothing. I'm probably one of the least qualified up here to begin to speak to you guys. But you know what? When you begin to regard the anointing, I believe cancer can fall off. I believe sickness can be healed. I believe crutches can be thrown in the dumpster. But it's until you regard, until this church gets it in their mind, that you know what? He is a representation of God. He's not God. He's a representation of God. Let me say one more thing and then I'll be done. I promise I'm going to shut up. But y'all keep pulling it out of me. It's y'all's fault. I've heard it preached before and it really changed my life about what representation really is. Because Adam sinned, you know what the Bible says? We've all sinned. Do any of y'all like that? Does that sound fair? No, but God didn't ask you your opinion. That's the way it is. So since Adam died, all have died. Since Jesus came, you didn't die on the cross. Jimmy, did you die on the cross and take him lashes on your back and then nails in your hands and feet? Someone did for you. Through representation. We take up that offering and you give your 10%. You know what the Bible says? God says, I bless the 10% and I bless the whole. 
The ten is represented in the whole. Representation. It's all about how you regard. It's the, is it that simple? It can't be that simple. You start regarding the man of God and you start honoring him when he gets on this stage, you're going to see this place explode. But in, as long as he's Jonathan to you guys and to me, I'm taking myself, as long as he's Jonathan, that's all I'm going to get. When he prays for me, it's just a man slapping me on the head. But when I get up here expecting, saying, you've got something I need and I want it right now. That's when you receive. Regarding them and honoring them the way they need to be. Y'all wonder what the teenagers get when we preach, guys? Do y'all get stuff like this all the time? They get saturated with the Word of God. As they begin to sing this, I feel, I, I feel a presence in this place like God can heal some people. Do you believe me? I, I feel a presence in this place like God can deliver some people. Amen? I feel a presence in this place. My God. Pastor Lee, is it that simple? Is it that simple? It's simple, but it's hard pill for American church to swallow. You want to serve. You, wanna, you, want, you want God to use you. Get under the wing of a leader start honoring that leader. Get under, the, get, get under a leader and let them lead you and direct you. I believe God is holy. I believe God is worthy. And I see this church making leaps and bounds. I'm talking about if you just gather a little bit of this, it'll change things in a day. I encourage you to get on YouTube, get a, get a CD of this, and listen to this again. Not because it's me, but because you got a lot of heavy stuff this morning, and you probably need to hear it again. But we got to start doing this, church. We've got to start regarding people the right way, the correct way. We've got to start realizing that we are the head and not the tail. We've got to realize that we can't point a finger at somebody just because they drank some alcohol, but we over here gossiping about them. We've got to unite. Why did I play that song, We Are Family? Because like it or not, I'm your brother. And you better start liking me. That's why I said if you're in this church and you're not being fed, the enemy would love it no more than you to stay in here and not get fed ever again. Go find somewhere where God will feed you. I'm sure pastor would agree with that. It's not about numbers. It's about impacting people in the lives of the kingdom. I feel led to today. And see, it's not me. It's not me. It's the anointing of God. I believe, I believe Brother Jimmy. Matt, anybody out here, uh, Blake, can stand up here and people wanting to receive from God. Y'all can lay hands on them and they can be healed in an instant. Did y'all do it? No, the anointing did it. We regard nobody after the flesh. We start seeing things in a new light. You're going to see things happen that will amaze you. You're going to see people flock into this place and you better get here early to get a seat. Who in this place is just holding on to the edge of your seat ready to get this? Ooh. They're going to start playing this song. You need healing. You need God to touch you. Can I get some men or, or women of God? That, let me get some people to stand up here to get ready to pray. I'm going to pray with you. You're a leader in this church. You want to pray for somebody? Let me get some leaders up here. I believe this place is going to blow up. See, it's not about me. You got this map. Brother Matt, you got the same God inside of you I got. Jim, you got the same God inside of you I got. All of you's got the same God inside of you I've got. That Moses had. That Abraham had. It's the same God. I'm going to say one thing. You want it? Get up right now. Come get it. Y'all sing. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Whether you come to the altars to get prayed for, thank you, Jesus.
Lord God Almighty. Lord God Almighty. Ancient of days. The ancient of days. I give us a thing. Oh Lord, I need you. You come up to the person. You are. And say, you know what? I need what you've got. Humble Lord, yourself. Lord Jesus, My Lord. Jimmy, you can grab you somebody to pray for. Blake, I need you, brother. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, 